Hey, welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here because today I want to talk about this Jeep. Welcome to my cluttered garage. You know I'm really glad you're here. Yeah. So my first love, my first vehicle was a 1979 Jeep CJ7, the equivalent of today's Wrangler. And I have really enjoyed Jeeps ever since that time. In fact, I read one time that a Jeep is the, possibly the only vehicle that's equally attractive to a 16-year-old girl as much as a 75-year-old man. And I think that's true. They, they just, for some reason, people love them. And the funny thing is they're not great vehicles, but they're fun. They're fun to look at, they're fun to drive, uh, and that's really sometimes all we need. So my first vehicle, 1979 Jeep CJ7. Here's a quick backstory. It was actually my third vehicle, but it was the first one to ever really make it to the road and become roadworthy. Uh, so when I was about 17, 16 years old, uh, I bought a 1961 Willys Jeep pickup truck, and that was gonna be my first car. It had no brakes. It had a 350 Chevy conversion kit in it. It had a cracked frame and it was not a great truck and barely seemed like it could ever be road roadworthy because it had such low gears. Anyway, I did some work to it and learned that I'm not going to get this thing on the road. So I listed it for sale and I got a phone call from a guy and he said, I've got a Jeep CJ that I'd be willing to trade for this truck. So I said, come on over. He came over with the 1979 Jeep CJ7. Now, mind you, this was like around 1984, 85. Uh, so that was a pretty new Jeep at that time. And I thought, this guy's crazy. He's going to trade me. And he said, I'll trade you straight up for this Jeep, for that truck. I had my older brother-in-law there with me who knows a lot about vehicles and mechanical work and everything. So he was kind of guiding me with that. And he's like, take the deal, man. So... Uh, he drove off, he towed away the 1961 Willys, and he left the 79 CJ there with us. Now, this, this 79 CJ7 also had a 350 Chevy conversion kit in it. What are the chances? It had a 350 Chevy in it. It had a lot of modifications because the guy was a welder. It had a stainless steel roll cage that he had built. It had stainless steel headers. It had uh, dual exhaust and uh, had a manual transmission, the original Jeep. I think it was only a three-speed, but it was a neat vehicle. Here's the thing, though. So he drives off, he leaves, and we're sitting there with the Jeep, and within the hour, we're looking at it further, and we decided to check the oil. I mean, we didn't check the oil while he was there because he drove it there. He drove it 20 miles to get there. So, But we're like, let's check the oil. Pull out the dipstick. It's dry. There's nothing in there. Put a quarter of oil in. Put another quarter of oil in. Another quart. I think the thing took four out of five quarts of oil before it showed up as full on the dipstick. So we put oil in it, started it up, and that thing smoked like a mosquito sprayer. I mean, it was just awful. So still a good deal, I guess, but turned out it needed an engine. And luckily, again, my brother-in-law was handy with that kind of stuff. And he's like, we'll find you a motor. We'll replace the motor. We can do that. And then we looked at the uh, the brakes because he had driven it and said, these brakes feel kind of funny. They work, but they just feel funny. The brake uh, cylinder, you know, it has two lines coming off, one for the front brakes, one for the rear brakes. And one of them was capped off. And we're like, why would that be? Turns out he capped off the front brakes because the brake rotors were so worn that the disc was gone and the fins were showing through. So instead of changing out the front brake rotors, he just capped off the front brakes and it was driving with rear brakes only. Again, not a major deal because, you know, you can change that stuff out. But we learned quickly that this vehicle had been really kind of rigged in many ways. Uh, so it was what I, I, I kind of learned a lot about mechanics. I probably spent more time under that Jeep than inside of it. But I kept it for a couple years and I loved it. It was fun to drive finally sold it. And at that time I had gotten a full-time job after high school and was making pretty good money. I bought a brand new GMC pickup truck. I was living large, but I always missed that Jeep. I've had a few other vehicles like that. I, I had a 1969 Toyota Land Cruiser, which is basically a Jeep, but made by Toyota. 
that was a lot of fun, but it was it felt like I was cheating because it wasn't really a Jeep. I had a 2000, 2001, one of the small Jeep Cherokees, which had a Jeep feel to it, but it wasn't a, a Wrangler or a CJ. Finally, around uh, 2011, uh, I needed a vehicle. The kids were older, and I thought, I think I'm ready to get another Jeep now. And uh, I found a 1997 Jeep Wrangler, the TJ model, uh, four-cylinder, five-speed. Those four cylinders are grossly underpowered, but it did the job. Beautiful little car, little truck, and I liked it a lot. Even though it had its issues, it was nice. Unfortunately, I only kept that for a year because the economy went south in 2008, 2010. I had to start liquidating things. I sold the Jeep to pay some bills and such as that. We've, we've recovered from that and that's okay, but still had that love of a Jeep. So enter this 2000 Jeep Wrangler. Maybe I should have said exit the 2000 Jeep Wrangler. Well, anyway, here we are with this Jeep Wrangler. It's a year 2000. It also has the 2.5 liter four cylinder with an automatic transmission. So it's probably uh, a dog on its best day, but it needs work. Uh, I bought this from a family friend. Funny backstory, I reached out to her about 12 years ago when I was looking for Jeeps at that time and said, do you have any interest in selling the Jeep? She said, no, but I'll let you know if we ever want to sell it. Well, here we are 12 years later. I see a Facebook post where she says, well, I think it's time to upgrade the Jeep or replace the Jeep. So right away, I sent her a message and said, hey, remember, I asked you about the Jeep. I'm still interested. And she said, I remember. And she said, you have first right of refusal on this thing. So we uh, went back and forth with discussion on Messenger, and then uh, I agreed to go down and take a look at it. Uh, they said it probably needs a transmission. It had broken down on her husband and had to get towed. So I did the research and a rebuilt transmission, if I do all the work and bring the transmission to the shop, is about $1,650. Uh, that's for a rebuilt transmission and torque converter. Not something I could do myself, but I could remove it and save some of the labor and do that. Uh, but I don't know if that's the problem, because in talking with her husband, he said it broke down, it overheated, uh, it started lurching and had to be towed. So it's more of an engine problem. Now, what I have deduced after having it here for a couple days, uh, I replaced the lower radiator hose that blew out on him, uh, filled it with coolant. I drove it one mile. Within that one mile, uh, it was running rough, but within that one mile, it was overheating, uh, extreme pressure in the cooling system, uh, steam was blowing out of the radiator cap. And uh, anyway, what I've come up with, I'm pretty confident that it is a head gasket that has blown on this thing. I think what's happening is that it's sending uh, compression into the cooling system. And what that's doing is it's creating tremendous pressure in the cooling system, which blows the steam out of the cap. Uh, it's also probably adding extra heat into the cooling system. So I think there's a tear in the gasket. I hope it's not a cracked head. I think it's a tear in the gasket and it's sending compression into the cooling system. Now, that's a project that I know I can do. It's a good amount of work but I watched some videos on it. If I'm methodical, I can take things off. I want to try it. I want to see if I can get it going. But I did notice when I drove it that one mile that it revved between second and third gear. It's only a three-speed transmission, but it revved, and I thought, uh-oh, that's a slipping transmission. I don't know how long that's going to play out, but if I can get the engine running well, I'll see what happens with the transmission. My question is, how much work, how much money, how much time do you put into an old vehicle? Now, the good thing is, I got a killer deal on this Jeep. Very fair. I only paid $600 for this Jeep. Now, if I replace the head gasket, uh, I imagine if I had a shop do that, that's got to be a five dollars or $600 job. If I have to get the transmission rebuilt for another uh, $1,600, you know, I'm getting up there well over $2,000 just in getting this back on the road. It's got some rust on the fenders, not as bad as some Jeeps. It's got some rust on the frame. Again, not as bad as what I've seen on other Jeeps. So it's not a bad vehicle, but it does need other things and other work. We're kind of getting to the point where you know, I might put into it as much as it's worth. And then you question, how much is my time worth? How much is all the effort worth? I don't know. So I guess my question to you is, what would you do? How much would you put into this vehicle? How much work? How much money? How much time? 
I don't know, but I'm gonna start with the engine. I think I wanna change that uh, head gasket. I think that's relatively easy, just time consuming, but I, I think I can do that. So also let me know, you know, do you wanna follow along? Should I put this content on the channel? It's a little bit different than the other content, but it's uh, life on the homestead. We're always doing things and fixing things ourselves. So if you want me to share some of the process with you, uh, let me know, I'd love to hear from you on that. So there's the introduction of the 2000 Jeep Wrangler. Welcome to the homestead. And uh, it, looks, uh, it looks a little better in the picture than it does up close, but it's not bad, it's not bad. It's a fun little vehicle. I'm excited about it. And uh, I hope that uh, I'll get some good feedback from you. So thanks for being here today. I do appreciate it. Uh, just kind of a talking video, but if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed to the channel, of course, I invite you to join us. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.